This is World AIDS Day Worldwide. This is World AIDS Day Worldwide. Hello and thank you for joining us for this global conversation. It's World AIDS Day Worldwide, live from Joy 94.9 here in Melbourne, Australia. I'm Rebecca Savick and I am so pleased you've been able to connect with us from wherever you are in the world. It is an audio and visual conversation being streamed live at worldaidsdayworldwide.org. Our theme for this hour is 20 years of pure joy, new and for, sorry, now and forever. And we'll be discussing how the station can continue to be relevant within the current media climate. We'll share the strategic vision for Joy as a media organisation and we'll talk about our inspiration for this project. It's you and me and some very special guests. We've got the General Manager of Joy 94.9, Conrad Brown, our President, Jed Gilbert, our Secretary, Sammy Cameron, and our Inspiration Partner for World AIDS Day Worldwide from Tomorrow's Future Today, Chris Dancy. Are you with me? Stay connected. Stream radio and images at worldaidsdayworldwide.org. Email in and join the conversation on air at joy.org.au. And if you're a little social media bunny, get onto our Twitter hashtag. It's hashtag joywad. In the studio right now, I've got two members of the Joy 94.9 board, Secretary Sammy Cameron and President Jed Gilbert. Thank you for joining us. Hi, Beck. Hi, Beck. How are you going? I'm good. I'd love to start with you, Sammy. I'd like to know about how you first became involved with Joy. Uh, I'll try to keep the story short, but it's been a very quick journey for me. Um, I, um, I'm i trans, and that's not something that I like to tell pe- I liked to tell people about. And when I had to change my name, I was still presenting in my previous gender. I was looking for, uh, I needed a legal person to sign some paperwork. And I looked up the internet, and this man answered, and I he said, well, you come, can you come and meet me? I'm doing an interview at a radio station. And uh, I said, yeah, sure. I came upstairs, and I'm looking around, I'm thinking... Uh, gay and lesbian radio station. Oh, this might be something I'm interested in. I'd never heard of Joy before. And so uh, he came in and showed me the studio and I started becoming a listener. And uh, then I decided I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with my life. So I decided to do the Taste of Radio course and become a presenter. Uh, So I became a volunteer. That was about 12 months later. And uh, that was successful, very successfully staying in in stealth as a queer woman, a member of Dykes on Bikes. And uh, then, uh, then I decided to go to nominate for the board. So I joined the board and we had our AGM. I'm now the secretary of the board. And pretty much nobody at Joy knew that I was trans. And uh, then uh, just to, just the week before Joy's 20th uh, birthday celebrations, I had planned for some time to actually come out on air and share it. And I wanted to demonstrate that you can be happy and that you can be successful and you can lead an, a pretty ordinary but fun uh, life. And uh, so, yeah, I guess that's my very, very fast journey into Joy. Thanks, Sammy. So um, we've also got Jed, our president. Yes. And Jed, how did you come to be involved with Joy? Well, it was about eight years ago or so, um, and I was doing audio production just as a hobby. I was, you know, doing music and playing around with music, and my sister said, you should get involved in Joy, you know, go and check it out. And I'd been listening to Joy for quite a while, um, been a listener for a while, you know, driving along to uni and all of that kind of thing. Um, And it sounded like such a professional station. It sounded like an amazing station. And I remember arriving there, and it was actually with you, Beck. Mm -hmm. And I arrived there, and um, I had my interview to become a volunteer. And it was this tiny little, above a hardware store, this tiny little hovel of a (laughs) studio. And I just couldn't believe that the sound that the station produced came out of this little kind of hovel (laughs) Um, but you know, I started on front desk, like everyone in the station starts at front desk. Thankfully you let me join, (laughs) gave me my introduction, um, and started on front desk. And then, you know, people ask you at the front desk, Oh, what would you like to do? What are you interested in? I was saying, Oh, audio production. Cause normally people, I think say, you know, I want to be on air. Um, but I was saying, I want to do audio production and everyone was like, Oh, Oh, we, we need audio production. Um, and so suddenly I was doing a whole bunch of audio production for the station then was doing news, uh, did news for a little while. We did a, we do a national news broadcast across Australia that goes out across all community broadcasters. Uh, so I was doing that for a little while and then, yeah, ran for the board and got on the board and, and then was treasurer and then vice president and now for a month or so president. 
Well, congratulations to both of you on your recent appointments. I know you've been on the board for a while, yep. um, but to Thank President yep. and to Secretary. Thank you. And so, Sammy, you know, community radio um, stations, the reason they exist in Australia is to give communities whose voices are silenced in mainstream media um, a voice. So for you, what does access to the airwaves really give us as a community? What do you think? Look, I mean, I'm a, mon a minority within a minority, probably within a minority, and I chose not to disclose uh, one of those elements of my queerness, I suppose. And uh, I was, I needed to feel confident. I needed to feel like I could be successful here, kind of like, just like kind of everybody else. And I didn't want to use... Um, the fact that I was trans to give me a free ticket into anything. And I found that Joy has been very supportive and very encouraging. Uh, I find that I'm always getting praised for the work that I do and I'm always getting encouraged to, you know, I'm doing a great job and that you know, built some confidence. I think getting on the board also in a strategic governance role, uh, something I've done before and I felt I could contribute to to, to join in a good in, a, in other ways other than just presenting and putting on a happy f a happy voice in my daytime music shows and my interviews and uh, so I think joy's given me a lot of confidence give me confidence to speak uh, on air um, trans voices audio is such an important thing and to not have to worry about people misgendering me on air is a really important thing for my own personal self-confidence and uh, just being liked around here and encouraged to do things and people praising me it's really built built up um, how my confidence and therefore I decided it was time to start telling a little bit more of the truth about who I actually was mm. and I think a lot of people around here were really shocked uh, in a very pleasant uh, in a very pleasant manner mm. and uh, yeah so joy's been a really good thing for me personally and I see that it's a good thing for other people that are involved uh, that are involved with joy but also our listeners and the people who are sitting there wondering about um, themselves and they hear voices and inf they get information. Uh, just back to your question about community, I'm involved with uh, quite a few little community groups. It uh, gives those groups a, an opportunity to come and say their piece on air. And we don't always have to agree on things, um, but they, anyone who wants to, who wants to go to the effort of learning how to present can come in and learn how to present. Or we bring lots of different community group leaders and other people in to discuss issues about their particular area of speciality and share. And we play, uh, Joy does a lot of community service announcements for all of those different groups. So we're providing a voice for anyone who wants to have a voice and, and wants to get their thing out there. So mm. um, it's been a great place for me. And so Jed, would you agree um, with Sammy about the access these airwaves are giving to our community? Oh, absolutely. You know, I, th you know, one of my favorite stories about Joy is a friend who was listening as a teenager to it under the bed covers, you know, had his, you know, like his little radio on, he wasn't out. He was probably not even sure, you know, what was going on for him personally, but he was listening to it under the bed covers. And I, th you know, I just think of that story so often um, because I think we are a huge, mental health support for our community. I think Joy over its 20 years has really framed the conversation in a lot of ways, not just for our community, but for the broader media and the way in which I issues have been covered um, and the way in which our community is talked about and the way our community is included uh, in, in the broader and more general community. Um, so I think it has been huge. I think as Sammy was saying, uh, we provide a voice, but we also break down isolation um, and it's really, you know, it's really interesting because La Trobe University was doing a whole bunch of research into gay men's health through a grant. And they were looking at the ways in which mental health support, the way that men were perceiving mental health support to, to be out there and to be um, available for them. And they did this whole, you know, analysis, this cluster analysis. And what it came up with in Melbourne, at least, was that joy was right at the centre of the cluster. And people were seeing joy as a mental health support, something that was always there, always available, and, you know, was delving into deep issues, but doing it in this really positive way and, you know, issues that weren't being talked about um, in other media. And, you know, even, even when we aren't talking about deep issues, it's still a really positive place where you can tune in, hear some great music, you know, and, and just enjoy yourself with people who, who you know understand you and, and just get you, you know. Mm. It, 
Yeah. Yeah, and it's nice to just hear um, your voice represented. And I think that's what you were saying, Sammy, to be able to hear um, a trans person on the radio for other trans people is hugely important. And um, to hear other gay male people, to be able to turn on the radio. And I, I think that incidental um, kind of stuff, if I'm talking about a movie and it's not a GLBTI movie, it's just a movie, but maybe I said I went to it with my girlfriend. And yep. to hear those kind of incidental things, I think is lovely mm. to come across, um, at, you know, when you're tuned into the radio. Yeah, it's huge. It's huge. And I really want to congratulate Sammy. You know, I, I think that Sammy has been such an inspiration since she's joined Joy and she's a pleasure to have on the board and be our secretary. And, you know, not only do you do a great job, but, you know, I, I think through you coming out um, and being that leader in the community, you know, I, I, people can look up to you and look at the peace that you have in yourself over the whole thing. And they can go, wow, okay, that's possible. You know, and I, I think that if you imagine when Joy started 20 years ago, it just would have been crazy. People would have said that you were crazy that this would be happening today. So I just wanted to congratulate you. Thank, <laughs> thank you, Jed. I mean, one of the messages that I want to get across to people that aren't familiar with trans people is that we're all actually completely different mm. and that it's really hard to generalise and labels are sometimes really helpful to reduce sentence the length of sentences, but we are actually really diverse and different. And I've had a very different life from all the stereotypes that you may have actually come across. And uh, so I just provide, it's just me. I don't represent the trans community. I'm just a trans, well, I'm actually, I like to call myself a queer woman. Mm -hmm. I'm primarily a lesbian. That's my sexuality. My gender is that I'm a, I'm a woman and okay, I happen to be trans. Um, and you know, that's, that's the, the labels I, that I give myself. Yeah. And uh, you know, I'm here to represent myself and show that you can be happy no matter what's happened to you in your life. If you sort things out and do planning and figure things out. Obviously I'm the secretary of the board. I've got some skills to be able to do things. I'm mm. a lot older than I look. Uh, I've had a lot of experience in life. And, uh, you know, you can actually turn the, the journeys that we all have to go through, you can turn them into positives and you can kind of put the negatives aside and try to do, just try to be, try to be a good person, try to be happy, you know, yeah. contri contribute to, to, you know, other people's lives. Yeah. And you feel good when you do that. So, Sammy, as a little makeup wearing, pigtail kind of, you know, indie music listening lesbian, <laughs> I know that you can't pigeonhole everybody into a type. So, um, thank you for sharing that. You're listening here to Joy 94.9. We are streaming live at worldaidsdayworldwide.org, where we're talking to Joy Secretary Sammy Cameron and President Jed Gilbert. You can join the conversation online by emailing on air at joy.org.au, or why don't just do a little tweet, tweet, little twit, twit. <laughs> it's hashtag joy, W-A-D, and join the conversation. Now, our theme today is about now and the future. So let me turn back to you, Jed, and ask you if you can share with us a strategic vision for joy. Yeah, sure. Well, look, we've been going through a really large process over the last year or so where we've been uh, consulting with a whole bunch of key stakeholders. We've been, we have over 3,000 members and so we've, we sent out a, a survey to all members. We have over 300 volunteers. We sent out a survey to all volunteers. We've had a bunch of member forums. Uh, we've had some workshops with volunteers as well. So we've been going through a whole process to get everybody involved. Um, and talking about joy now and into the future. And so what we're coming up with is a five-year strategic plan that's called Our Voice, Our Vision. Um, and it's going to set out where we want to be in five years. And I think, you know, at the moment we have a sub-metro license, which means here in Australia and Melbourne, uh, we actually have only a license to broadcast for part of Melbourne, not the whole of Melbourne. Um, and so one of the things that I'm really hoping that we can see in there is that we get to a digital license and that we can go broader than our sub-metro license. I think the other key things that's happening in the media landscape is online. And, you know, today is a beautiful example of the way in which media is changing. The fact that we're, you know, streaming video, uh, we're on air, um, people can listen to us all over the world. And I think for me, the thing that really drives me is that need that we were talking about before, the need to provide a voice for our community. Um, it's not just isolated to Melbourne, you know, it, it, the need is across the globe. And, and so I think as much as we can kind of edge our way there and as much as joy can be that voice, 
that helps people not just in Melbourne but across Australia in rural and regional areas and overseas where you know there are still 70 countries with very homophobic laws people can be killed for being gay you know and if only they knew that joy.org.au they could listen to this radio station you know so that that's a real driver for me but of course there's a whole bunch of other things in the strategic plan um, around uh, radio and the diversity on our radio, uh, the high quality sound that we produce, the way in which we engage with community at uh, key community events, and then a whole bunch of in- internal stuff as well. So what sort of steps are you taking to make that happen? Well, we're hoping to finalise the strategic plan really soon. Um, we're hoping to send out a draft um, and go through a final round of consultation on the draft and then basically from uh, it kind of stops from our end we just <laughs> monitor from then and then it's over to the operations team to really um, meet the targets and we'll be making sure that we have some metrics around the targets and um, yeah we'll kind of be up to the operations team which you'll be talking uh, with Conrad after uh, in the next you know half hour um, it'll be up to Conrad and his team and how to meet those strategic objectives I think that's our favorite part about being on the board is it's our job to set the strategy and then we delegate it to the management team to execute it and, and our role is to oversight and make sure that those things are you know meeting their targets so that's my favorite thing about being on board <laughs> delegation <laughs> and so right. you've just recently come into um, your position on the board Sammy so yeah. um, I know that Jed's had a long experience with this five-year strategic plan what's kind of stuck out for you with it uh, look I mean it's um, I mean the, the our broadcast range who we can actually uh, broadcast to is very important. Uh, lots of people I talk to, I've been lucky enough to do some regional events recently. We were in Shepparton uh, a couple of weeks ago representing Joy. We were in, we were in um, uh, Adelaide last weekend representing Joy, doing some bro- live broadcast back. And it was, f- people haven't heard of us, so they can't reach us. So they say, oh, I can't hear it in the car when I get past a certain distance. And uh, so I think for me, getting our range and getting us out there and you know, as you know, the internet's really is great, and we've got access on our mobile phones, and people's data plans are, are large enough now that you can stream without it costing you much money at all. So I, I think getting us out there, uh, making people aware, and then being able to include people from different regions. I like the idea that technology allows us to have high quality audio uh, from all sorts of places, or in regional areas in Australia and overseas as well. Oh, uh, you know, we've been using technology all day today on this amazing broadcast, and uh, we've had, uh, you know, we're, we're talking to people all across the world. So, uh, f- for me, joy's about live. It's about live. I think that's one of the things that makes us different from other, say, media organisations like, you know, newspapers or online blogs or those sorts of things. We, you know, we're doing this right now. Uh, it's it's live. You know, all the mistakes and other sorts of things, the blunders that you make when you're a presenter, uh, technology going wrong and those sorts of things. It, it it's it's uh, that's what kind of makes us different. And so. Um, yeah, yeah I, th- I think they're the things that I find interesting about Joy. I think the other thing that we can really focus on as a board is that Joy has such strengths. You know, it has such amazing strengths. And so there's many ways in which Joy is already adapted to the new media. Um, so we have a social media team. We have a fantastic new website. Um, and, a, you know, we've had a website for ages. But we've got a fantastic new one. Um, shows have blogs. Uh, shows podcasts so all of our shows podcasts we've just launched on the Australian iTunes we, when they launched the Australian iTunes we were a partner in that um, we have the largest podcaster for community radio in Australia um, you know and when I'm walking to work and listening to Joy I'm doing it on the on the app on our smartphone app you know so it's it's huge and I think that that's one of the strengths you know if we're talking about our five-year strategic plan there's so many strengths that joy is building upon which is just really exciting to see and makes our our job on the board easier I must say (laughs) um, because the operations team is just doing a fantastic job well if you want to contribute to the conversation today send an email on air at joy.org.au or if you're tweeting hashtag it with joy w-a-d just like simone did uh, when we were talking about labels earlier sammy she said labels can help but they can also hurt so we do look to others to give us the example and understanding so she was saying thank you to you sammy thank you simone so um just finally as we start to wrap up i wanted to know what you think some of the challenges for joy are to stay relevant in today's kind of media landscape 
Yeah, look, I think one of the one of the beauties of the joy mission statement is that it's not just about well, it's actually not about fighting for equality as such. It's not about a fight in any way. It's about um, providing a voice and it's about breaking down isolation, you know, and it's it's about celebrating our achievements in our diversity. And so I hope that even as we go forward into five years and, you know, we become, I guess people call it mainstreaming or, you know, whatever mm-hmm. that is, as, as, as we achieve, um, you know, marriage equality and we achieve full legal rights and, and as we have rural regional towns that don't have discrimination going on in them, um, there's still going to be a fight globally, um, but there's always going to be a case where I think that we are a community and there are differences about us. And to be able to provide a voice, break down isolation, isolation and celebrate our achievements, I just love our mission statement because I think that it will always be relevant and we can always continue to do that. There, there are things that we need to do that we need to keep doing. We, we can't become complacent about it. It costs a lot of money to run Joy, and our money comes from our members and our sponsorships, and we occasionally get some very small grants, and we get some benefactors. We've got our patrons program, and uh, these are things that we need to remain focused on. It would be great for us to have a permanent home, a, a building of our own, for example. Uh, it, we, you know, the di- digital will cost money to roll out. Our equipment is always uh, a little bit out of date um, and uh, it costs money to pay salaried employees and those kinds of things. So uh, I think it's important that we, we remain focused on that because whilst I feel great about my life right now, other people that are coming out in the future will always have problems. We always need to be here. Joy needs to be here forever, no matter what words like mainstream and those kinds of things that we want to talk about. So, uh, you know, the board has a, a job, a responsibility to make sure that we are here for the long term. And uh, uh, I think that uh, money's a really important part of yeah. that for us. Money is a huge thing. Um, another thing that I think that came out of our recent consultations is one of our biggest strengths is inclusion, uh, the way in which we are very inclusive as an organisation. And yet one of, our, the, one of the biggest challenges that people identified were we, we weren't inclusive enough. You know, so I think that that's going to be a continual journey for us, mm. um, you know, providing the many different voices that are in our, for in providing for the many different voices that are in our community, providing for culturally and linguistically diverse communities, providing for people with disabilities. You know, I think that there's many different ways in which um, we can keep growing as an organisation. And I see Joy as a leader in our community. And so I think we're going to keep growing as a community uh, talking about these things, talking about intersex people, talking about transgender people, talking about queer, you know, some people yeah. identify as queer, you know. So I think there's there's a level in which our community sometimes excludes within our community. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think I'm hoping that Joy is already a leader in that sense, that, it, you know, in, in terms of including um, but, uh, you know, there's always more to do. I always encourage people, if they, th- if they don't think that we are diverse enough, then they should come in and do Tasted Radio, yeah. become a volunteer and put on a show. Yeah. You know, it's not we, we, we're open to anybody that wants to come. And, you know, you don't even have to be queer. You could, we have people that are straight, straight yeah. allies that come in and do some yeah. great shows for us. So if you don't like the fact that we're not inclusive enough, do something about it, you know, yeah. come and help us. We'd love to hear from other people uh, that think that they've got something that we're not doing and we'll, we'll encourage it and support them in doing that. Yeah. Well, you can have a look at joy.org.au. We host all of our volunteer vacancies on there and you can come in through the front door and at the front desk just like our president did and make your way to the top. <laughs> Well, I want to thank you both, Sammy and Jed, for being part of today's very special broadcast. You're listening to us here on Joy 94.9, streaming live at worldaidsdayworldwide.org. In this first half, we've been talking to Joy Secretary Sammy Cameron and President Jed Gilbert about their experience at Joy and the strategic vision of Joy's future. Coming up in the second half, we're going to be speaking to General Manager Conrad Brown and our inspiration partner for World AIDS Day Worldwide, Tomorrow's Future Today, Chris Dancy. You can join the conversation online by emailing onair at joy.org.au or you can even tweet. If you are a little social media bunny, hop onto Twitter and just make sure you pop a little hashtag on there. It's Joy, W-A-D, that's J-O-Y, W-A-D. 
We'll be joining Conrad and Chris very shortly here at Joy 94.9. This is World AIDS Day Worldwide. This is World AIDS Day Worldwide. You're listening to Joy 94.9, streaming live at worldaidsdayworldwide.org. You can join the conversation online by emailing onair at joy.org.au or tweeting with the hashtag joy. W-A-D. In this second half, we're joined in the studio by Joy 94.9 General Manager Conrad Brown and our inspiration partner for World AIDS Day Worldwide from Tomorrow's Future Today, Chris Dancy. Thank you very much to both of you for joining me. Thanks for having us. So um, I wanted to start with you, Conrad, if you could tell us about how you first became involved with Joy. So I came to Joy nine years ago as a volunteer um, and after nine months uh, doing the, the hard slog, on the uh, front desk, I uh, saw a vacancy for a junior admin position with the sponsorship team. And um, I'd been hoping to work my way back into a uh, media role that involved radio. And it just seemed like a really uh, amazing place to be a part of. And I was so impressed with the energy and the enthusiasm. So I, um, I took the leap and applied and got the role. Um, and then over the last eight years, I've... Um, moved around lots of different positions, moved into as production manager, also took on a community liaison role. Um, and then uh, two years ago, was offered the position of general manager, which was uh, an honor and a privilege. Um, and yes, so I've been in that role um, since, uh, well, yeah, two years ago. <laughs> uh, so it's been a fantastic um, journey for me. And I feel that um, I, I've, it's been amazing to kind of follow Joy through the through the last eight years and you know from our uh, little home in South Melbourne to these amazing studios in the city of Melbourne I kind of feel like I've been part of our teenage years and grown up a little bit myself as well. Yeah we're also joined in the studio by Chris Dancy from Tomorrow's Future Today and I've been uh, saying this whole hour that you are our inspiration partner for mm. today and this project so tell me about how you um, came to hear about Joy. I was speaking at a conference in Louisville about three years ago and a contingency from Australia had shown up uh, and one of the people there actually was working at Joy at the time I think mm -hmm. uh, her name was Breed and she you know, ran up and told me all about you know life in Australia and uh, I was really fascinated and then she just started talking a little bit about Joy and I had never heard of such a thing at that point and immediately raced home and tried to find it uh, online and then uh, kind of became uh, the, the Denver fan base for uh, <laughs> uh, the Cherry Street Denver fan base <laughs> for uh, Joy Radio. And so um, how then did you come to get involved with this project with Conrad? Wow. So I I was talking to, to my friend and she had talked a little bit about uh, the conference that's coming here in, when is it, August? July. July. 2014. July 2014 and how exciting that was. Um, and, and we just had this idea, well, why don't we see if there's something we can do with the radio station? Uh, you know, the conference is uh, very important to the world uh, uh, community of people uh, living with HIV and AIDS. Um, and when I found out that there was something we could do to possibly promote the conference and do something for joy, who's done so much for the community for so long, I thought, wow, what an amazing opportunity. So I think I rang Conrad or emailed Conrad mm -hmm. this email that sounded like I was you know, stepping out of a DeLorean after traveling back from the future. And I said, <laughs> let's do something absolutely amazing that'll put a dent in the universe around the LGBT community globally, uh, but more importantly, change the way that media is consumed uh, for the rest of time. And so Conrad, you've received that email. <laughs> It's probably a Monday morning. Yes, something like that. <laughs> I'd had a little bit of a conversation with our former president, Breed Lewis, and she had given me a little bit of a, an idea about tomorrow's future today and this amazing concept that Chris had, had come up with. Um, so after receiving Chris's email, of course, I had a quick look. <laughs> and then um, and then Breed uh, set up a, a Skype chat with us. And I think it was really Chris's um, enthusiasm and passion um, for what he had created and his vision that he could see that it, it could be applied to um, to something special for joy. And just the fact that, you know, with our 20th birthday coming up um, 
particularly on World AIDS Day. Um, you know, for us to have that conversation, I think it was in late June, early July. Yeah. Um, you know, with that kind of six month deadline counting down, it really did seem like something that, while huge in scope, was realistic that we could pull it off. Um, so it's kind of um, overwhelming to be sitting here today, and it's actually happening after all of those. Uh, emails and conversations that we had so um, yes but it really was um, I guess Chris being able to see what it could, what he we could use it for and what he'd already done with it um, that really uh, inspired us hence the inspiration partner tag. Yeah. <laughs> and so why was it so important for us to um, take on this amazing project um, on today? For me there's a couple of reasons um, I'm 45 and I lost my partner in 1993 in June. Um, and the first World AIDS Day, of course, was almost uh, five months later. So it, it was symbolic for me in June, in December of 1993, to be able to have an event that was somewhat validated the fact that I had lost someone so critically important to me. And then to have it come full circle and just be 20 years later and around a project I started just to enable my own community of tech professionals, and then to be sitting in you know, the world's largest, most connected uh, LGBT radio station on earth, and uh, certainly now the most proficient and, and, and progressive after this event, uh, it's just so, it's so exciting. Yeah. So, um, Conrad, when we look at um, uh, the technologies that we can imagine are going to come into the future, mm -hmm here for uh, our little radio station. What are the kinds of things that maybe pop up um, as in your head, maybe just even in your imagination? Mm. <laughs> Holograms? That, yeah. Let's hope his head is his imagination. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's Because if it's a separate one, that's a whole, it's a whole nother. Yeah. It's in a jar next yeah, to my yeah. desk. Um, I think if I just look at the last eight years that I've been at Joy, even the use of the internet when I first started was quite, um, you know, it was just a, a thing that we had that we could use as a bit of a backup tool. I mean, now Joy is, you know, powered by um, what we, you know, hear and see and, and talk about that all comes from the World Wide Web. But, you know, um, I remember SMS being such a controversial thing for Joy to integrate into um, its regular programming and that, you know, that connectivity, oh, how are we going to control it? Um, you know, email, using email as a way for people to be able to engage with us was such a, not a huge challenge, but it was just, you know, it was new. Um, to add social media to that, which in the last two or three years has become a huge part of what Joy does, um, particularly in the last year, I think we've really harnessed it well and um, and use it in a, in a way that is really beneficial for the station and, and connecting the community. But for future technology, I think I might pass it over to Chris because <laughs> in my head I can see, I, I, I know if, like from a practical point of view, <laughs> yes, <laughs> robots will be doing everything. But other than that, I think you know, digital radio for us is, is something that's realistic. We can all see that um, as something that we can aspire to and, and achieve and, and have in satellite stations and you know um, specific online programming. I can see those types of things. But, um, you know... The next part, I'll hand it over to the tech guru. <laughs> Gosh, I don't know. I think the most important thing to remember about you know the future is it's unevenly distributed, and <laughs> uh, we're, we selectively take part in it. And most of that just comes from our ability to be present. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm wearing technology on my head that's recording this conversation and streaming it while you're streaming it. So in some ways, for me, I see the future as being a very participatory state where you'd have Joy, the, the brand, but you could have thousands of individual shows coming from somebody's apartment to someone's cafe. And the media actually becomes assistive and adaptive. Adaptive in the way that if I'm having a particular type of day, there's certainly sensors that could pick up that information and give me the type of media that I need instead of looking for that special song. And I think in some ways, that's a very powerful message. And when technology gets out of the way and you can just experience the world around you, it's important. How media in, in, inter, interacts with that is really almost an adaptive uh, feature. My, my actual movement throughout the day should provide me with information. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so much of that is what I work on when I'm not doing crazy conferences and, and outrageously connected things. 
uh, information. People want relationships with information. They don't want relationships with social media. And so tell us about today's future, tomorrow's future today. Mm. Sorry, got that around mm. the wrong way. Your inspiration around that and then how that then gave you the idea to um, partner with Joy. So TFT, I'm 45 and in, in tech for a very long time. I'm very fortunate that I get to travel and speak in lots of different countries, even countries where English isn't their first language. And I saw a need a year ago when we had our very first conference, and we've had two now, uh, to allow people who didn't have the ability to speak and they just weren't known or they didn't have large social followings they hadn't written books you know they were they were people with good ideas who didn't have access to information much like our community did in the in the uh, early 80s uh, we were brilliant people who had to like huddle together you know so we weren't beaten mm -hmm. um, and I wanted to give these people a platform so that the simple idea was very simple have a 24-hour conference that started in New Zealand and, and went around the globe every hour on the hour, but the speakers would be selected by their peers. So there would be no steering mm -hmm. committee, there was no programming, you, the community selects the speakers. And then finally, the most important thing for me, we instituted in our second conference in June, and that was each speaker would be paid. Because I think it's in the future we need to, we need to focus on giving back to each other, but in a very tangible way. The distribution of wealth is so, so, very disparate right now uh, that I'm willing to do whatever it takes to make sure that brilliant people who don't have a platform are empowered, informed, employed, and entertained. Mm. And I think that links very nicely to what we're doing here today. You are listening to us here on Joy 94.9. We're streaming live at worldaidsdayworldwide.org. And we're talking to Joy's General Manager, Conrad Brown, and our inspiration partner for World AIDS Day Worldwide from Tomorrow's Future Today, Chris Dancy. Please do join in the conversation. You can do that via email. That's onair at joy.org.au. You can also hashtag joy, W-A-D. I love that Chris is giving it's visual hashtag. and audio. <laughs> um, and we have had a message coming through from Jim from Melbourne. He has said... The future will be us. I think that he has just succinctly just wrapped up what we were talking about. He really did. So, okay, so we're thinking about um, the technology that could be available. Then what do we think the challenges for joy are going to be to stay relevant in today's landscape? This, yeah, I can see so many short-term challenges. And I think, you know, the, the usual things that Joy keeps on coming up against are the things that I think we're doing a really good job at addressing. So it's about being financially stable, mm. about having resources that are um, that are long-term ones, you know, and we've got the people part of it, you know, we do a very good <laughs> job at. Those people that come here and stay, you know, you're a great example of that, Vic, um, who gives so much and get so much out of it as well. I think, you know, we're doing a really great job there. I think... One of the things that I would personally personally love to see for Joy is that we have our own home, that we become self-sufficient in a way that we have our own space. And while it's been amazing to be here in the city of Melbourne and, and as a transition from our little home above the hardware store to this amazing professional studio has been fantastic, I think it actually has also shown us that we can have more and that we it's not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. to want more and um, we definitely are, are happy to stay here for as long as we can but I think as an organization and for where we're going where we're going to be continue to be more than just a broadcaster it would be fantastic to have a space that um, you know has got our stamp on it and that we have con complete control over and there's challenges that come with that but I think as an organization we can we can face those quite well yeah and if you think about it in the next uh, five to ten years, we'll add another two billion people via mobile device. Well, if 10% of those two billion new listeners are LGBT, uh, there certainly is a huge need uh, for that's unmet. If anything, you know, we're entering a time of abundance for LGBT people and LGBT media. Once you connect another two billion people and 10% <laughs> of them being LGBT, we actually don't have enough choice. So and true. we've received a message through uh, to onair at joy.org.au from Matt in Melbourne who said, Joy has helped me connect. So uh, just reiterating what you've said there. And also Simone says that uh, we need to participate in the future. Mm. 
definitely. So um, one of the things that Jed spoke about in the first half of today was that Joy was an early adopter mm. of uh, podcasting, yep. mm -hmm. one of those uh, early adopters. Um, and do you think that we've maintained that level of um, uh, embracing of technology? I think today is a really good example of, of when we are presented with something that is, <laughs> is outside of what we think we can do and we really pull everyone together and say, you know, we, we tap into the resources that this amazing organisation um, has got just through the people, it becomes really clear that we can do more. We can be bigger and better and, and really push ourselves. And while it's scary, it's also um, really exciting. And I think you can feel that, that we're actually, we all feel like we're achieving something pretty um, fantastic today. You know, the other challenges that I was just thinking about um, as you were speaking before, is while I was saying that we've got the people part of it is great, I think our biggest challenge, and Chris, by saying that about the, you know, that figure, is that we need to be more inclusive and we need to be more diverse. So while we, we have no problem getting people coming in here, you know, it's all about making sure that we're getting everyone mm. and that everyone comes along for the ride because, um, you know, it's at the end of the day we need everyone's voice to be heard and um and simone's right as well it's about participation so if you see you know a hole in in joy that you think you could fill or someone you know could fill that's what we need well and, that hole's right yeah. between the j and the o yeah <laughs> and that's where you belong you found it well you know? done yeah. nice oh, that's lovely yeah, that is well you've actually reiterated um some of the stuff that um our board members said earlier um both sammy and jed um they talked about uh, inclusion mm -hmm. and Jed said that perhaps even though we are very inclusive uh, some of the feedback we've received is that we need to be more inclusive sure. mm. and then Sammy said well if you want to if you're not hearing your voice heard come along uh, get involved and, mm -hmm. and, and, and share that's, your that's voice. really difficult though I mean even in my own community there are people who, who are demanding uh, where's the inclusion and where the inclusion well it's very easy when you're behind your phone at a coffee shop to demand leadership leave the coffee shop and do something yeah uh, it, it took a tremendous amount of effort for me to do what I did with TFT. It took a tremendous amount of effort for Joy to do what they do. You can't demand diversity and not be involved. So, mm. you know, ACT UP was about getting up. <laughs> it was about making a difference. Um, and it's time. Um, you can't hide behind Twitter anymore. You have to get out in front. Well, I'm really enjoying having this conversation with you two. If you have just joined us, you might be listening here on your radio in Melbourne on 94.9 FM, or you might be streaming at worldaidsdayworldwide.org. Please join the conversation on air at joy.org.au is the email, or hashtag joy, W-A-D, <laughs> uh, if you are a little twit twit, and, uh, and we would love to hear from you. So I guess uh, in terms of final thoughts over the next five minutes or so, mm. guys, I wanted to talk to you about the significance of today and uh, we're coming up to the halfway mark of this amazing project <laughs> of 24 hours of live streaming mm. and to get your thoughts on, um, on what it's been like. Well, for me, um, all of this week we've been celebrating joy. It's been um, it's a, you know been our twentieth anniversary of um, being on air. Um, the last week has been really reflective and mm. um, and fun, but also I think it's brought up a lot of um, emotions for lots of different people in lots of different ways. And while I think it's mainly been positive, it also does bring us back to our purpose and our mission statement, making sure that we continue to you know make sure that people don't feel isolated, that they have a voice and that we celebrate our culture and our achievements and our pride. And, and I, I look at our mission statement and think, you know, the, our founding, um, uh, the founders of Joy back in the day got it so right, you know, straight away off the bat. It's, um, you know, we can continue to build on it, but what they've put in writing is really still really true today. And, um, and seeing what we're achieving today, 20 years from when they first um, turned on the mics, I think they were in here earlier today and I think they, uh, I can't imagine how it felt to them walking in here and seeing this happening yeah. and seeing all of these people here 
Um, I hope it filled them with a sense of pride mm -hmm. um, about what they've done and, and where they've brought us to. And also the people that are here today who are all behind the scenes, you know, um, it's very fun to be behind the mic. And, um, Way to go, Ivy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it's, it's fun to be all, you know, um, doing a show on air, but it really is the power of the people behind the scenes that, you know, um, we know are so important to making all of these things happen. So, um, you know, and that's been joy right from the start. Those people who sat in a, at an office and made those phone calls and, and filled out all the paperwork, those are the people who allow us to, to be able to do all these great things today. And 20 years on, it's still really important. So it's been an amazing day. And I think it's it's been the perfect way for us to cap off 20 years. And Chris, you had this idea in Denver, <laughs> on the other side of the world, in a different time zone, mm. in a different season. Mm. <laughs> And we're now halfway through what that day looks like. Mm. And how does it feel for you? Well, I think it was it was really emotional yesterday when I walked in and saw all the production and met you and a lot of the staff and, and the volunteers and everything. It was really emotional for me yesterday. Today, I, I, I have to be honest, I'm just enjoying it. It's amazing to watch you guys wake up to this constantly connected, video surveilled, <laughs> connect, you know, always on kind of culture. Um, it's wonderful. I hope, you know, that when today ends and people have time to reflect and they realize how much of a difference today made in so many people's lives, that they take time to just be kind to themselves, mm. be kind to each other. Um, the profoundness of today will come from the kindness we show to it tomorrow. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming up with uh, an idea that has then given us an opportunity to... Uh, have this amazing experience. Mm. Um, just some final thoughts from you before we close off. Um, Simone has said that straight people make a difference to LGBT too, and that's why she's listening and learning today. Uh, she sent that through to onair at joy.org.au. I love that. We do have a great program during uh, our weeknights called Stand Up Straight, which represents um, our straight allies, which are so important. And, uh, and they are part of our community who we broadcast too but just final thoughts i just want to thank everyone i think everyone has been amazing i want to thank chris obviously <laughs> for for giving us the seed and allowing us to um to let it grow i want to thank all the people behind the scenes who have made this happen particularly um the tech team and dean and andrew and and all of the amazing volunteers and presenters um it is a truly a privilege and an honor for me to work at joy and come in here uh every day and um, I'm just very proud. And a little bit emotional. A little bit. Which is sweet. <laughs> Thanks. <Vic. laughs> and I know that you've been a little bit emotional too, Chris, but just to give you the final words. No, I just, you know, thank you for having me. I, I, I enjoyed flying over and, and for Conrad for believing in this <laughs> crazy idea. Um, but gosh, for final words, I, I just want to say to Tommy, my partner, who I lost uh, uh, 20 years ago in June, uh, we, we're in a zero disconcordant relationship. I was negative and Tommy was positive. Um, don't be afraid to love anyone. Uh, don't be afraid of their status. Don't be afraid of their gender. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid of their station in life. Uh, be kind to yourself and love, love recklessly. Thank you. Oh, I love that. Love recklessly. Well, you are listening to Joy 94.9. You might be here in Melbourne listening on your radio on 94.9 FM, which seems... <laughs> like such an old school way to do it with so much technology around me today to think that someone is listening on a radio. But of course you are. There are plenty of you listening on the radio. You might be listening on our app and you've heard us talk about it. If an app is something that you haven't got, head along to the website. It's joy.org.au. You can download it completely for free. Just keep an eye on your little data. <laughs> but you can stream us from anywhere in the world. Yep. Or you might be online listening um, normally we do stream at joy.org.au, but today we're streaming at worldaidsdayworldwide.org. I would like to thank all of my guests today. Uh, we had our Joy 94.9 Secretary, Sammy Cameron, our President of Joy, Jed Gilbert, our General Manager, Conrad Brown, and our Inspiration Partner. I think it's such an apt little phrase <laughs> that I'll be using about you uh, for our World's AIDS Day Worldwide from Tomorrow's Future Today. Stancy. Thank you all for being part of today's special broadcast. Coming up in the next hour, 
we'll bring you a full roundup of analysis of the official events held today at Victoria's Government House. Join the conversation online and hashtag joy WAD. Bye. Bye.